Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining me for this video. Uh, I'd like to start by saying you've probably come here uh, because you saw an earlier video I did that showed a chamfer being put on the top of a block in a vice that I'd unbolted from the mill table and moved and rotated. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card to it here. Uh, you should probably go and watch that first. Uh, it'll help make more sense out of this video. So what we have on the screen at the moment is the model that was machined in that other video I mentioned. It's just a simple rectangular block. Uh, I was using an odd piece of uh, scrap flat bar. And we had one cam set up here. Uh, you can see now where the stock sat and you have the origin placed in the middle of the top surface of the stock. The Cam consists of two very simple operations. Uh, firstly, a simple base operation followed by a 2D contour. Both were done with an 8mm flat end mill. Uh, you can see that the contour is making two laps. That's purely because the piece of stock was uh, rough cut with a bandsaw and I didn't want the tool either chattering or of course still breaking when it ran into lumps in the material that it wasn't expecting. Uh, in fact, in the other video, it worked out very well. It looked like the tool had pretty even engagement. Uh, I promise that's good luck, not judgment on my part. So what everyone, or what several people asked was, uh, how do I do the cam to go from that point and with the vise deliberately moved, put a nice even chamfer around the block? Well, here's how I did it. I started by selecting that original setup and if I right click on it and select duplicate, um, I'll open it and I'll, from the duplicate, I'll remove those two operations. And I'll be neat and I'll rename it to chamfer and I'll make that active. So, what we've got at this point is an exact duplicate of the stock setup and the positioning of the model. We still have the origin placed on the top of the stock despite the fact that that piece of stock is no longer there. Um, so the first thing that was done was to probe the vertical surface. Now the probe operation is normally live under the cam menu. You can see it here. But in the right hand end, for convenience, this little vertical ellipsis, if I click on that, there's an option to pin it in the toolbar. And you can see I've done that, which is why I have the probe operation sitting here. So I'll add a probe operation. Uh, the tool, well, if you're a PathPilot user, the tool will always be tool 99. And tell you what, what I'll do is I'll move this back into the uh, border of the recording. That'll help. Um, and for this particular operation, all we have to do is select what it is that we're going to probe. Now, because the stock is no longer there, we're going to probe something on the model, and that thing will be that surface there. Now, Fusion initially assumes that I wanted to find the center of that uh, rectangular face. I don't. What I wanted to do is find the height of the surface to set the height of our origin. Now, I mentioned already that the origin is described in the setup as being at the top of the stock. Um, the setup also describes the uh, model as being 0.25 millimeters below that height. So when Fusion probes this, it knows that it's going to find the top of the model and it knows that to locate the origin properly, it has to add 0.25 millimeters to that to find where the top surface of the stock should be. So if I just click OK at that, that's the first part of the job done. The second probe operation is the really the interesting one, which was to align the axes. For this operation, again, we have the probe selected, and this time we will pick that surface. Now, again, typically Fusion will decide that you probably want to set that surface and, and uh, probe that surface and set the, the x-axis origin. In fact, I don't. I want to align the angle. So it now shows us two points. Um, spaced 12 millimeters apart. Uh, that's a default. It's four times the diameter of the tool. My probe is a three millimeter tip. 
Um, typically, you want to make that as big as you can. It improves the accuracy. So I'm going to increase that in this case. I think, yeah, 25 is not bad. And again, we'll click OK. The third probe that I did was to uh, establish the XY uh, origin location. So probe there, click on the top surface, XY is the default. No parameters need to be set on that. And finally, having got that far, we can now add the 2D chamfer. Uh, the tool that I use for that is a 4mm 90 degree spot drill. And all we have to do is pick that outline. I think my defaults are, yeah, it's a 0.5mm shampoo, which is what I did in the video. Hit OK. And that's the full set of, uh, of operations that I did. Um, now in terms of how you actually turn that into a program, one of these operations, the Angular probe, is currently supported in Mac 3, and I haven't implemented it yet in Fusion or Linux CNC. So what I'm going to do is I will disable that one for the moment because it will cause an error if I try to post it. Uh, I'll suppress that. And I'll post the rest. And I will select um, Tormach Path Pilot with probing. Now I've added a couple of options to the post processor here. If I slide this down, there you go. I've even changed one so that you can spot it. Fast probing speed 40 inches per minute, slow probing speed 1 inch per minute, and the slow probing distance 0.04 inches, 1 millimeter. Um, sorry, 1, 1 inch per minute, I think I said millimeters there. Uh, the values here are always in inches, whether the document is output in millimeters or inches, um, they will be converted by the post processor. So those three values are entered here because they don't exist anywhere in the uh, in the cam operations, and you do need that by the time you get down to the to the G code. Uh, so if I hit post, um, we can actually see what it makes of that because I think I have it set to open and show us the G-code. Take a few seconds, yeah, there we go. So at the top here, this is the normal preamble that Fusion adds to everything. I've added these three lines here, which are simply taking those three custom parameters and storing it in G-code parameters. The underscore at the front of the name makes it global. Um, but 1016, 25.4, and 1.016, as I said, these have been converted to millimeters from the values that were, were originally uh, specified. That was one inch per minute. It's now 25.4 millimeters per minute. So here we start, and the first of the, the probe operation is the vertical probe. The first few lines here are added automatically by Fusion. And what it's doing is it's well, selecting the tool, setting the height for the tool, the tool length offset, making sure the spindle's off, makes sense for a probe. Selecting G54. It then positions the probe at the starting coordinates. This is the XY position where the probe is to be performed. And the Z20, that's the uh, clearance height that was specified. Then it hands it over to my code. And all it does is calls um, an NGC file, it's, it's a G code subroutine stored in an NGC file called FB6 the underscore probing z. And the parameters that are passed in, let me see if I can remember what these are. The first two are the X and Y positions where the probe is being performed. The third one is the retract height where we should finish the probe. So after it's finished, it will go back to 10 rather than 20 where it's starting. V is the nominal diameter of the probe, as stored in the uh, Fusion 360 probing library. 1000 is, um, I'd specified 1000 millimeters per minute as the lead-in feed, feed rate. That's the speed the probe moves between uh, 20 millimeters where we're starting down to the point where the probe starts. 10.25 can't remember what that is. I think that's the height below the starting point where you're expecting to find the surface. So we're 
We're starting from a retract height which is 10. We're expecting the origin to be the, sorry, the surface of the stock that we're probing to be 0.25 millimeters below the origin. So that will be 10.25 millimeters below where we are at the moment. <laughs> the minus one is the direction. Surprisingly enough, vertical probes are always done down the way, so it's negative. Five is the, the approach distance. It's the distance away from where we're expecting to find the probe that it moves to fast probe speed. Five is the over travel. That's how far past we were expecting to see it. We're prepared to go before we define, describe it as an error. 10 is the height we should return to afterwards. Uh, that is the retract height. And finally, 01 is the number of the WCS that we are updating. So 1 is G54. Once that's done, you're back under control of normal fusion, which cancels modal modes and moves back to the clearance height before going on. <laughs> and generally that's the format that all of it takes, so the clever stuff is all inside um, FT60 probing. And there's one of those functions for each of the probing modes. I'll close that. Nothing more to say about that. Um, so I hope that's helped sort it out in people's minds how this works. It's actually quite a lot simpler than you'd imagine. Uh, the more I use this, the less inclined I feel to get involved with things like uh, the probing WCS overrides. Uh, when I started doing this, I used it for everything. But as time goes on, I've realized that that's really a very special case that you'd want to use that. Most of the time, you just don't bother with it at all. Um, I haven't used it here, and it works fine. So I hope that clears it up in people's minds, and I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.